like, oh, you're just not the same as me or these people. You're just, you're just different. You just are not that kind of energy. I'm good. You've forgotten the punk, the reason why we all got into punk rock and punk music. That's yeah. okay. You know, to each their own. It does become business at some point. It has to be. John from Keep Flying. Welcome. What's happening? All right. So What's pre, happening? pre-interview, we we just realized we're like neighbors almost. So we, ele- that is right. Elevator pitch for everybody. Tell us who Keep Flying is. Keep Flying is a six-piece punk rock band, porn-driven punk rock band from the Northeast originally and still. We have mostly relocated to different places on the East Coast and Denver, but we're, that is still where our attitude uh, comes from and where our music comes from and, and the, the style of what we're doing is, is from. So, yes, we're, we're New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania-based band, um, but I got guys all up and down the East Coast now. Um, I say horn and punk band because... I play tenor sax in the band and we have a trombone player and the way we write our music is more so imagine like a lead guitar riff, but instead of a lead guitar riff in place of that, it's like a horn line. And uh, we do some like um, vocal harmony stuff, but on the horns, it's like the horns are what sets us apart. As my singer would say, it's our cheat code. Our cheat code (laughs) for keep flying is having the horns. We didn't have the horns. It'd be a little bit of a different thing, both, uh, musically and uh, live show. So we put big emphasis on the fact that we have horns in the band. Now also, maybe I'm biased because I play sax. <laughs> and the, the horn section is great in the band. I'm not just saying that to you, but some of these ska bands or horn sections can be a little bit, um, we'll say rough. Um, now, you guys started in what, 2016? 2015? 2016. Yeah, 2016 we started. It was a different lineup then. The only, um, me and Henry are the only two that have been, and Henry's our singer, that have been from the beginning till current. But um, everyone that that was in Keep Flying um, did a great service for what we're doing. And I hopefully they feel themselves as well. I, I'm still friends with everybody who is a past member. We still stay in touch with everybody. And a lot of those people still are at the shows with us and or hanging out with us at our events and things like this. Um, but <clears throat> the current lineup are all, it's like the perfect lineup now. It's been like slowly over these years having to like figure out like, oh, this wasn't going to work. Oh, this works better. This wasn't going to, oh, this works even better than that. And now I feel like we're at a place where it's like, and I've said this before, so I I, um, I don't want to jinx it, but I, I do feel like this is it now. I feel like the lineup is here, and I'm really psyched on the lineup because everybody brings what they bring, both musically and as like a business person and or just a savvy person. Whatever they bring, they bring it well. Mm-hmm. Um, Henry is the predominant songwriter, and thank God for that. Um <laughs> I think that he's incredible. I'm glad that it took us, it took us so many years of being in separate bands to finally like have something happen where we were playing together. Um, and I'm glad because Henry writes the best songs of any band I've ever been in. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I write all the horns, which I've been pretty proud of, especially his last couple records. Um and then uh, everybody else contributes both, like I said, both to the m- actual writing of the music and the vocal harmony stuff. Chuck is out of this world. The new record, Dustin's shredding guitar all over the record. It's awesome. Ricky's laying down his trombone stuff. It feels good, man. I'm like really psyched on where we are and where what comes next, even if no one else ends up being psyched. I'm, I'm pumped. I'm pumped. Well, sounds like when you listen to, because I listened, I discovered you guys a few months ago on Instagram. And just went through the whole discography on Spotify. And it was like in 2016, was it keeping, keep, follow your nightmare. Um, yep. That was more of like the traditional throwback to the 90s ska, where it seems like you guys have progressed into, I don't even want to really say it, but it's almost like more rock with horns, just more punk yeah. with horns, more emo-ish yeah. with horns. 
Um, yes. Was that on purpose or was that just a natural progression? I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, those songs, when Henry first showed me them, they were ska songs. They, they all had upstrokes in them because they were songs that he had started writing for his old band that disbanded. And he really felt this calling that he was supposed to be the guy that kept that going, that music, that kind of music going. He was very distraught about it. This is what me and Henry first bonded over when he was at my house, very upset that like the band, his old band was finally done. And his brother was talking about like trying something different. And he was really resistant to wanting to do something different. And we sat and talked and I was like, dude, what if you did just like take those parts out and made them straight punk, straight chords through like, like just, you know, and he did. And he sent it to me like three days later. I was like, dude, this is awesome. This, in fact, reminds you of what my old band used to do when I was in the band uh, a decade earlier or a little less than a decade, but um, five plus years earlier. Um, and I was fired up. As soon as I heard, it, I was like, dude, this is this is it. This is it. So, yeah, those songs on that record are sound more in that vein because they were even more so ska than they ended up becoming in the final product. Um, when we get off of this, I can dig up and find you like a Dropbox with the original versions of these songs. And oh, wow. like, okay. oh my, oh my. <laughs> um, so yeah. And then I, again, like I was saying um, before you asked that it's evolved because the band evolved, the members changed, uh, musical influence changed, uh, not changed, but was added to. Um, and also feedback from people, people telling us what they liked and what they don't like made it easier for us to be, well, if people like this, why would we not play songs like that? Uh, mm -hmm. it, we like the songs. It's not like we're selling out and playing songs for the radio. We're not mm -hmm. on the radio, but we're, why would we not want to gravitate towards what people like if it is something in line with what we also like? Right. So that's how Follow Your Nightmares uh, came but we still play those songs though because they're they're heavy live songs right candy cane forest and safety harbor they just they're such good live performed live that they've been in the set list from the beginning i mean i'm sure with this next record coming out things will change but they're just such slam like home runs to play mm -hmm. live you know now, because they're just like gritty punk songs right now you guys released a ep in august was it Revival, yeah. Revival. So do you have a new album coming out this year? Yeah, so we have a record finished called Daylight. You're the first person that we've told that to. Um, and it's gonna it's going to likely also come out in August. Okay. Um, we're going to start the process with the singles, like everybody else. We're not going to do a surprise drop or nothing. It's going to be singles because we're, we're just, we want to give this as much attention as possible. As, as many of the songs as we can put emphasis on, we want to, because there's no throwaway tracks on the record, in our opinion. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to start, I think, in March. March is going to be like the first single. It's going to come out, and it's it's a, it goes back to before Revival. Revival was a very different thing. Uh, Left Behind, which is the name of the song that we're dropping first, is what comes next after survival, which was our last like proper full band punk record. Right. And it's just, it's the next, this is what's next after that. Um, it's a good mix of what you were saying. It's more like rock, emo, pop, punk, punk, even more so than before, actually. Okay. Um, Good horn line in there, like like those st standalone horn line that's in there. I'm excited about, but the, the rest of the song, the horns are mostly like highlighting the vocals and highlighting the guitar parts. It's like kind of cool. Like I'm excited again. I, I'm excited to play it live. We're just a live band, right? We're just a band that we just win people over with the live show. We play the live show and people are like, all right, I'm in now. I'm I. This is cool. Now I know you um, guys have some shows coming up in February and March. What are your guys's? Do you have any tours coming? Like long, long set so, of tours? Yeah, February is just a quick stint out to Chicago. Kind of what we were talking about before the interview. Like it's hard for us to do one-offs because mm -hmm. we live all over the place. So we have our friends in this band, Guardrail Punk Band from Chicago. They put on this snooze fest every year. They're like, "We'd love you to play." We never played before. It's at Beat Kitchen, so we're like, "Yeah, of course." So we kind of. 
just have to throw a few other shows in the mix in order to make that make sense where we don't just hemorrhage money. Mm -hmm. um, maybe we'll make some, but maybe not. It's never been about that for us. Uh, currently, aside from that, yes, we are planning. We've been responding to all the comments of people that have seen us the last half of last year, especially on the West Coast and the Midwest. We are finishing up um, a very extended wet Midwest West Coast run um, that's actually going to start in Nashville. Um, so I'm excited about that. Uh, and, and only do like the, the, the South, the Midwest, uh, the upper Midwest and all the West Coast, basically following up and returning to all the places that we went to for the first time, first real time with Bowling for Super Less Than Jake last fall. Um, it's just smart to do, especially right. if people like never heard the band and they're like, oh, and if, if we wait any longer than six months, they'll probably forget. Right. So this is what our and it's, so it's coming together right now. And that's March, April. And as I mentioned, we're dropping the first single in March. And so we're hoping that between revisiting these locations on the west half of the United States and putting out the single and then like another single in April, that by May, East Coast and Canada and like everything that's going to come for us through the summer will hopefully have shown itself and we'll be able to um, plan accordingly show wise. I, it's crystal clear. I, I'll tell you, as I just told my guys recently, we will be touring heavily starting in March until the end of the year. Like we're going to want to give as much service as we can, even if we don't get support tours, which, you know, we always hope to get something. We're going to go out and do it ourselves. If not, mm -hmm. because we're a live band and we want to play. And um, if we're putting out a record, we've got to be all in on playing and right. playing these songs for people, you know? Now you guys so, have, I mean, you've done shows with Goldfinger. You did the Less Than Jake Bowling for Soup tour, uh, Pie Tasters, right? You guys are the Pie. Yep. How did you guys come up? Because you guys are, you guys are independent, right? Yeah. Yep, you guys are still independent. How did you guys get all that stuff? Because I mean, there's sign bands who don't even get that uh, kind of attention and and love from from like the legacy artist really of the genre. Networking, being kind. <laughs> I, I hate to be that person, but like in between my last band and Keep Flying, I tour managed bands mm -hmm. for many years. I just worked for bands. I made a lot of friendships with people, a lot of connections. I did a lot of favors, probably too many. I realized during the pandemic, I think I actually probably overdid how many favors I was doing for people that I was not getting in return. Right. Um, things have changed a little bit since then uh, with how I, uh, you know, address certain scenarios. Um, asking, sometimes it's as simple as asking, <laughs> hey, I noticed this show went up. Are you looking for any other? Oh, you are. Well, we right. love to play. Um, and then just friends. Sometimes it's random. We did some shows with the Bouncing Souls, and I that's only because the artists got COVID. And we were in the right place at the right time, and we were able to drop what we had to just go and do it on like 24 hours notice. It's like, well, we can do that. Mm -hmm. um, so that that was like why that one happened. Um, I don't even have my ear to the ground with when these tours are being built. So I don't even know when to submit. A lot of times I'm asking for friends who are booking agents like, hey, is there any stuff that we should submit for? Because I don't even know what's being built right now. I don't have my ear to the wall with that. I'm, I'm guessing. I'm right. going to guess that this band has something coming up. Any any chance that they're looking for an opener? or um, And then sometimes we get asked. And I think it goes for all artists of all size, from the smallest to the biggest, to get asked without having any chips involved is probably the best feeling in the world. Yeah. Like no, no notice, no clue that it's an email was coming to get asked is like, wow, you recognize that we bust our ass mm -hmm. for very little. And we're willing to do a lot for next to nothing. We just want to play. Mm -hmm. um, feels good to be recognized that in that capacity. 
what 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 did you guys learn or what did you learn personally i mean touring with the less than jakes and playing with the goldfingers and you know the john feldmans and all that like what did you learn what did you take away from those experiences as an artist or a business person that everybody's still doing the same thing even at that level right i mean i've known that but like then you have the certain combos you know off the record and you're like oh you're the same you're mm -hmm. you're the same way or 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 you're not mm -hmm. Also, that happens too. Not so much with Keep Flying, bands we've toured with, but like bands I've been on the road with who have been out with other bands. Oh, I've had experiences where I'm like, oh, you're just not the same as me or these people. You're just, you're just different. You just are not that kind of energy. I'm good. Um, right. You've forgotten the punk, the reason why we all got into punk rock and punk music. That's yeah. okay. You know, to each their own. It does become business at some point. Clear, It has to be, right. you know? Um, as the person who does like mostly all the business for keep flying, like I recognize that as the person who tour managed for, for over a decade. Like I, I know that there's business, of course, it's just like, like everything. Um, but we, <clears throat> when someone says thank you or that they appreciate you, it goes a really long way. Right. And maybe that maybe that's not for everyone, but I know for me and my guys and just talking about keep flying when like somebody in a band that we look up to or crew of a band that we look up to or or a driver or anyone says thank you or like I see you, I appreciate you goes a really long way because mm -hmm. we've all as people I feel done a lot of things in our life where we just if we even got a thank you that would be man at least they said thanks right we've all done some laundry list of things where we didn't even get a thanks mm -hmm. and like that is like my worst feeling in the world i hate feeling like i just did all this and not even a thank you right <laughs> not, not not even a merry christmas text message <laughs> you know that'd be nice but but not everyone is the same and not everyone is built the same way and not everybody has the same empathy. And, and, and I recognize that as well. So keep flying. What we do, when we go out on these tours with these bigger bands. We do everything we can to help them and their crew because we, we like to pride ourselves on being the band that gets remembered as, well, they put on a hell of a show and they were super helpful to have around. Mm -hmm. They were, they were very easygoing and they, they helped our, text load the cases and, and they were like helping the driver back the box truck in and like they stayed till the end of the night to make sure that the merch guy got all the bins because it was raining outside we we like to just do all those things not because we want anything in return we just want to be acknowledged as like a group of people who still care about that sort of thing right i don't expect anything from it i expect nothing my mm -hmm. expectations are so low that that's why a simple thank you, it will hit me like up here because I expected nothing. Mm -hmm. And hell, if something does come from it, well, I'm glad we did that. And maybe we got this tour offer for the right reasons. We're just people who want to be here. We want to be here. You know, I interviewed uh, Reb from the Drowns a few weeks ago, and he said, I don't even think some of the bands who've taken us on tour think we were a good band, but we were a cool hang and we were easy to get along with. And that's why they brought us on the tour. And I said, you, you know, speaking to you up and coming artists, you have no clue how important that is. The hang factor when you're dealing with bands and not being a D bag or anything like that is so important. I want to get back to a couple of your songs. The three of my favorite songs for you guys is I had to write them down. We have late reply, high cholesterol yep. and fire sale. Those are like my, those were like, that's my Spotify jams. They're saved in my profile. And so I'm very excited about what you guys have coming up. A couple of things I've noticed on Instagram. And the first one is go to August 22nd on your feed from 2022. And all five of you are mooning everybody. Who was the unlucky person that had to take that picture? <laughs> was that this year? I think so. Wasn't it 20, 2022? It was, I, I'll tell you, it was a self timer. It was a self timer that we leaned up against. We we took a few days off in the middle of our tour to go back to a place we went to last year in 
uh, Cape and Bridge, West Virginia. We had a great time last summer. So we went again time for an extended period of time. We shot a music video there uh, and we just like just us. And that has been an ongoing gimmick since the band started. <laughs> now, we have done the thing where we we archive the posts on the Instagram because not a lot of people go far back. And, you know, right. when we, the new record comes, we'll do it again. But we have from every era of the band taken this like forward uh, or facing us from behind photo of us naked. I don't know why we did it, did it, why it started, <laughs> but we've kept it going. And yes, when we added Dustin to the band, we were like, well, we need to get an updated nude photo <laughs> and I'll be completely transparent. That is the largest amount of likes we've gotten on any post on Instagram since we started the account. So each one has gotten like more engagement, you know, and I don't know. It reminds me of the old days, like Blink-182. Right. Green Day. Fans used to be naked all the time. Right. Right. Now, granted, it's 2023, so we recognize you can't just have your junk hanging out there. You know, <laughs> you can't. But, like, from behind, I think is okay. It was, I mean, um, hey. And I'll caught, stand by that. Caught my attention. Yeah. You know, I'm like, what? You know. Um, now, how, with you guys being spread out all over the country, as a band yeah the logistics of you guys do you guys fly into the city and then leave from there do you guys fly into the first show how do you guys like on a logistics standpoint for anybody out there who wants to get a band and have them all spread out all over the place how have you guys perfected that it changes depending on what we're doing what the tour is but clearly since all the gear is in new york the most likely scenarios is um, and also we have so many airports in the Metro New York area. Right. I usually am able to find the best case scenario flights for everybody into New York. It, one of the airports. Now, granted, mostly it always ends up being like someone's flying to JFK, someone's flying to Newark, <laughs> someone's at LaGuardia and I'm at Islip. So it's like we still have to like figure that out. But I usually try to find, you know, whatever's like cheaper on the cheaper end just so that we can hopefully not lose money on whatever the run is. Um, we usually are, we haven't owned a van since before the pandemic, but we've been renting from a few different friends. So we usually have the van rented already. Our drummer usually picks it up because um, it's close to him. And usually there's some combination of, of Ubers and or pickups with the van. The la This last year, Every tour we rehearsed the day before, whether it was in North Jersey before going to if the if the first location was close enough. But if it was like a fly out, we've rehearsed. We did a Florida fly out, Smart Punk, which they license our music on vinyl. And there's some of our best friends and an amazing record label. Mm -hmm. um, they have like a re rehearsal slash for studio space. So we've done that in Orlando where we've rehearsed there before a tour. We've done that in Texas at our friend, this band nominee. They have uh, all their gear in their basement of the house that some of them still live in. And like, we've gone there and be like, okay, can we rehearse here before we start this tour in Texas? Mm -hmm. um, we always try to do that now. More so for the physical side of our live show than for actually playing the songs. I have full faith in my bandmates that they're rehearsed in the music. It's more so that we're older and we gas out after three <laughs> songs. So when we rehearse, I actually jump as if I'm at the show because otherwise the next day I get Charlie horses, like in my whole body. Right. And I'm like midway through, I'm like, I, I need, I need songs to be cut, but we can't <laughs> cut, but like, I'm going to pass out. Um, so it's good to like, same thing if you're a runner and you take off for a month, right? It's like, well, you're going to just go right into sprinting. Right. I don't know about that. Now um, on, in on Instagram, you guys are getting fans, getting the band tattooed on them. Uh, you know, yes. get, getting the logo. Yes. How, as an artist, does that make you feel? Is that like uncomfortable for you? Like, you, you know, like, no, it's, it's. As someone who has a bunch of band logos tattooed on me, mm -hmm. uh, to see that someone else has felt the same way that I was moved by those artists, that they've gotten our logo tattooed on them, is uh, speechless. Mm -hmm. Whether it, When the first person got one, 
And now it's in the triple digits. It's like, I cannot believe that. Uh, it's a big deal for you to do that and like choose to get branded with something. Mm -hmm. um, let alone my my Vance logo. Um, what it's overwhelming. What do you think the impact is? Why do you think that they picked Keep Flying versus another band? Like, what are, what do you think that connection is that you guys have with the fans that they do want to brand themselves? Oh, I, I know the answer. And this is with no ego. It's because our band sings about really serious topics. Mm -hmm. And we present the we present these really serious topics that a lot of people can relate to in a very fun, lighthearted way live. Mm -hmm. And it's it's a a way that if one or 12 songs connects with you lyrically and you get like when you really dive into it and you're like, oh, I feel the same way. But then you see the way we present it live. It's like, oh, oh, oh I, I feel better. Um, the band makes me feel better. Right. There are certain shows we play, certain songs we play at those shows that I'm like feeling away because I'm thinking this, these lyrics are very real. And you're, I see you in front of me saying the words back. And I hope that you know how real they are. Right. Um, and it's only gotten more serious lyrically. I would say the show has become even more fun. Like as we like get, you know, acclimated with each other and like we're able to, I, I, I think, I, I mean, I said, I know I have to assume if it's another answer for someone else, that's clearly an acceptable answer. Right. I just, from my own, from being self-aware of my own feelings on the matter and like a few other friends telling me like the way that you guys like do this is like crazy. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you, listening to your stuff, it is, I think it's, it's not as, it's a lot deeper than a lot of the stuff you'll yeah. hear in the genre these days. And I know that yes. that's, a lot of people are going through a lot of stuff, you know, and they need, they don't need just the fluff or, or whatever. Now I'm going to let you go here in a second. Um, Cause I want to make sure that everybody on your, on your team still likes me after this. So we're going to let you go in a second, but how can they get in contact with you? Where can they go to check out the tour dates? And, and um, you know, I always, when I talk to these artists, I always go, Oh, when you come to Nashville, like Nashville, hot chicken, you got to go. So where's your favorite place for Nashville, hot chicken? Cause you're the one who actually knows. Um, so I've been vegan for over 15 years. Oh, wow. But, okay. But there, Maybe don't. There, there's a place we haven't gone in a while. I have to say it, even though I have to say this beehive, hmm. which is in on Gallatin in Nashville, yep. they do some great mock versions of these dishes and they have a special sometimes that is the hot chicken. And that's probably the best one I've ever had. Okay. Um, right. um, for, for, for everybody else. Um, I don't know. It, I feel like it's starting to become a little controversial because yeah. people are starting to get like a little bit, you got to go to Hattie B's and then yeah. the, some people are like, I've eaten there 45 times. I feel <laughs> ill. I, I can't go there no more. But then there's still a line out the door. Right. And you're like, all right. But then <laughs> you hear about these spots popping up. Like I, this is from my friends. They're like, dude, like this is the question I got. I'm like, I will say it's Nashville's cool for food in mm -hmm. general these days. A lot of places popping off. I like opening up and like we try everything. Um, <laughs> I don't want to say the wrong place, but they, you know, that's like a. Oh yeah, oh yeah. No, it's 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 similar to this is similar to it's actually the same as when people for Philadelphia are like, well, wh which cheesesteak place you go to? Right. Which one? Right. You go to Jim or not? And you're just like, there's actually a lot of places. Or not <laughs> clearly, there are other choices, but you, you you try to start going that. Oh, you're one of them. You're one of them. Oh, we're good on that. It's like, oh, all right, all right. So, like, I mean, I've talked about it with people. Uh, Hattie B's, 
Hattie B's probably yeah. my my favorite. But and you know, like when you but you say that to other people in Nashville, and they're like, "Well, you're a suburbanite. Like, you know, you live in the right. suburbs. You know, so." You're kind of like a sellout. It's kind of like how I feel going to ska and punk shows these days because they look at me and they're like, well, you're not punk anymore. And I'm like, it's not mm. about it's not about the size of your mohawk, bro. But the but but the Nashville pricks treat me the same way when it comes to uh, the, the East Nashville people treat me the same way when it comes to hot chicken. Well, East Nashville, for those who don't know, is like a new part of Brooklyn. Yeah. where all these people have moved there from the Northeast or California or some other few places. But like, I'm only East. I'm only friends with two people who are Nashville natives. Everyone else is in yeah, yeah. transplant from somewhere. And like, I understand their pain. Like one of my very good friends of over 15 years, he's always been in, in uh, Tennessee. And I think he's in Murfreesboro now. And he's like, everyone's moving in. It makes living here harder for, I'm like, yeah, I, I get brother. I, I lived in New York my whole life. I, I, I understand. Um, I, I get it. Um, but that's how it feels. It oh. feels like, it's like I'm in an area like that because anyone I see, I can ask them, well, where are you from? No, where are you actually from? Right. I know that you moved here and then have this dialogue. Well, what, what were you doing before here? And like, blah, blah, blah. So I, I kind of like it because it's, it's very similar to, to New York or, or LA. And I'm not the biggest LA fan. Love my friends that are there. Love the venues. Love the food. Not, I, I've i spent a lot of time there. I've right. prob- yeah, I'm good. So I, there's other places, you know, but um, no, no shade. Just there's other places. Um, East, East Nashville is like the Williamsburg of the South now. You know? That's how it feels. <laughs> I mean, my neighbor directly across the street is someone I've known for 14 years from touring. Didn't know that he bought the house there. Saw him outside mowing the lawn one day. It was like a crazy thing. 50 feet from me. Now that's my neighbor. Is someone right. I spent years on Warp Tour with and all these other uh, tours before that and after that. Very good friend. I'm like, I cannot believe this. How How is this reality? Whereas where I grew up on Long Island, Oh, there's maybe three or four people left that I'm close with. Nobody could stay there. Right. Like, you can't. Why would you stay there? Unless you were having a, just like a family and trying to just do that thing. It's it's not really for like music. It's not for what we're doing. No. Um, not so, anymore. So how can people get in contact with y'all or check out those tour dates or the new single Keep drop in the March? Band. All the socials is at Keep Flying Band. We we try to get on there pretty much every day. Henry runs the TikTok. I think he does an okay job. Have I haven't logged in in two months, so I have no idea actually. Um, uh, Keep Flying dot Band is the website. That's got everything pertinent. I'm gonna be redoing the site soon for the new record. I'm gonna be getting all that ready to rock. Um, yeah, I mean, you said very- high cholesterol. High cholesterol, late reply, and fire cell are your favorite three. And I'll I'll tell you that the next record is like in the, that's where it sits. That's awesome. I can't wait it's to hear. Like it. the first single is like a late reply fire cell. Like it, it to me, it's like it falls right in line with those. I mean, when you come back to Nashville, maybe I can bribe you with some vegan food, and you can show me the new album. Oh, I'll ha- oh, you don't got to bribe me with anything. <laughs> Any car I get in with anyone, I'm like, well, let's put the record on. It's not that long. <laughs> it is another It is another EP. It's only 19 minutes. We just, we don't, we don't like having any songs wasted. And we're a band that can play anything in our catalog at any time since we've always done EPs. We've never done a full length. We're always rehearsed in everything. And so, I don't know. To me, that's like a cool thing. We're able to change our set list and we're able to, take any request well what song we could play it we're rehearsed in every song right there's no throwaway songs for us and we figured out ways to make them all work live sure some of them we know which ones sit a little bit flat versus for live like for energy wise um you know so maybe some of those we don't play as often but um yeah i don't know surviving the nights become our biggest song in the last year and that's the last track off survival and that's like a slow slower song that's mostly just henry and acoustic until the band kicks in but it's lyrically our most important song that we've released and like the one that's really pulling people in live right like like that's the one and so even though the energy is lower it's not 
because you feel it from the crowd coming back. Yeah. Um, so I don't as, know, no throwaway. I, I'll listen to that record with anybody that wants to listen to that <laughs> record because it's also a little different. And I like to see with no bias, like, let's just put it on. And I would love to hear what you think. Yeah. Well, I got to tell you, you guys are great on social media, very active. Your merch, your merch is outstanding because some of the merch and especially in the sky genre is kind of brutal to look at and very cheesy or just very outdated. Um, and I appreciate just the aesthetics of what you guys are doing as a band as well. And when, when the, when the new album comes out, we'd love to have you back so we can talk about that. Hundred percent. I mean, I'll just drive over. Um, yep. I'll, just, I'll just come back that's on the, the door. <laughs> that's, that's the way. Well, John, thank you so much for your time and good luck on the album and the tour. And I will see you around town. Thank you. Thanks brother.